man. I want the birds. I want the squirrels. <laughs> Ridgely Silverton. Hey, Good boy. All right. For Brad here, we have a knife from the Dollar Tree. All right. And it's Can I get a review from a man who knows a little something about knives from the Dollar Tree, well, please? Thank you. It's actually a little loose. It okay. would probably be kind of pocketable. It isn't locking, so that's actually pretty dangerous. Uh, it's made out of, I imagine, it says stainless, so it's probably 440 stainless. Uh, nothing fantastic about it. It's just kind of a uh, general use uh, 440. And it's got a screwdriver, um, Phillips, and it's got a fingernail clipper. Oops, so there's the fingernail, uh, not a clipper, a fingernail uh, cleaner and file, okay, and a little Phillips screwdriver. Could come in handy, probably works, especially on small uh, screws. And we got a little corkscrew here if you're taking the lady out for wine, and uh, you can actually do that. I bet the so, wine's going to be more than a dollar. Oh, I'm sure it will be. So we got a little flat screwdriver here. We got a bottle opener there. And we got a knife blade. Okay, I already showed you that one. So there's the knife blade. And on this side over here, we got um, a bottle opener. And I think it's probably scissors. <laughs> Man. <laughs> okay, so let's put the bottle opener back down. And, uh, oh, it's, it's kind of mashed off to the side, so the handle is over there, and then you've got a spring, so it, it is scissors, okay, and let's see, okay, that worked pretty good, but it went right past, it's uh, not exactly what you'd call top quality, but it does cut, and it works pretty good, actually. Um, I'll open it up and see. It actually bites your skin pretty good. You can feel if they're sharp. That side's not as sharp. It would definitely need a little bit of help. Okay, but oh, it went right past the spring. So it is about what you, you know, what you would pay for. So just like that. If you keep it bent over to the side, it works okay. But if you let it, you know, just come down, it, it doesn't work very good. What about the ever so important knife? How sharp All right, is so it to begin with? Can it be see. sharpered? Sharpered. Let's see if we can sharper it. I just got home from Oklahoma. Long trip, short time. 800 miles one way. Went down on Thursday, Friday, worked Saturday, Sunday, left Saturday, Sunday night at uh, 4 o'clock and drove till about 10.30 and then got up this morning and drove the other 500 and I think 25 miles on in. So let's look and see what we got for sharp. Okay, and it's right on the verge of sharp. Good God, that is so <laughs> flipping bad. So let me uh, let me just grab for a second this little guy. When your knife sharpener is so small, you almost can't find it. Okay, here's. Uh, We know who that is. That's the orange man. Orange man, good. <laughs> orange man, good. So we'll get one of the other sharpeners here in a minute. But let's, uh, you know what? I'm going to start with the cross V on, on the, uh, well, I don't know. Maybe I can get it. It is so dull. So I'm going to put more pressure on it. Move along quickly. Come right on out here like that. I'm going to change the bevel on the uh, blade because it's probably about 20 or 25 degree angle. Whoever sharpened it did not intend for it to get sharp. Probably because Dollar Tree is going to be little kids, uh, maybe, most of the time. So just like that. Turn it over. Turn it over. The only time I would recommend a knife like this is for a, a, a really little kid that needs to kind of learn how to handle them and open them and have one and get used to it in their pocket. It doesn't really do too much of anything. It doesn't work right. It's not sharp. Um, it won't cut the kid. Uh, you might give them a knife for that and don't really expect them to use it on anything. Just get used to carrying one and then go to a sharper knife. Okay, let's see. Just out of curiosity. And yes, I've done this a few times. 
just like that. All right, and let's see if we have anything better. Nope, that's what I thought. It's gonna require a serious tune-up. All right, so let's do the uh, mini, spark, sharp and spark mini. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this so I cut my leg. You guys all watch this. Tell the kids not to do this. So I'm gonna do it like that. Come in, right back up. I'm gonna try to catch enough metal that you can really see what I'm talking about. And I am a little more coordinated than your kids that are nine, 10 years old that might do this and cut their leg. They'll learn. Not everybody that touches their leg cuts their main arteries and bleeds to death in the backyard. <laughs> Dog drips on me. I wouldn't tell kids to do this though. No, I wouldn't. But if you're halfway as intelligent adult, <laughs> look at the metal building up on my on my leg. Right now I'm just cutting off enough metal to make a new cutting edge on it. It's about one of the only kinds of sharpeners you can use to cut a knife down that fast unless you're using a, a work sharp bench uh, grinder, sander, work sharp belt sander. All right, let's see if we got something better going on now. I make knives out of the back of a hacksaw blade pretty fast, and this was already started. So let's see. Now we polish the little wire edge off the blade. Dollar tree, dollar knife. Probably cost them 30 or 40 cents to make. You sell 20 million of them a year times 30 cents. Oh yeah, you can end up with some money. Ooh. Well, that's better than it was by all means. Let's see if we can hurry and make it even more gooder. All right, so we'll just kind of hurry. And go right along. See if I can't cut an edge on it. Completely reconfigure the blade. Cut it down to where it's thin enough that it actually has an edge. Just like that. A lot of metal coming off, that's for sure. I was taking a nap. <laughs> That's what you got to do when you're sharpening. It's still not ready. It's actually starting to bite and take the thumbnail off. So it's getting there. Let's do it again. And if it was actually on the edge of a table, like you see me at the gun shows, where I can really control the knife, it's better. I'm not going to screw around here and cut my pant leg. These are actually fairly new pants. That'd really piss me off. Then I'd have to make a movie, a video called You Pissed Me Off, but I'd have to film it in a mirror. <laughs> I've got some videos that are going to be coming out, things that are, things that you buy that are junk, and I'm going to tell the whole world they're junk. I got some telescopes that I'm going to have fun with, they're junk. Oh yeah, they can see up to 10 miles and see a bird, sharp and clear. Lucky if you can see anything at one mile, maybe an elephant. All right, let's see. I watched a video on YouTube the other day and it was about hippos. And when they say the lion is the king of the jungle, that's not even slightly true. Go online, go to YouTube and search angry hippos or hungry hippos 
mad hippos, mean hippos, whatever. Did you know that a hippo is absolutely a carnivore? I did not. I thought they were, you know, they ate the grass and stuff off the bottom of the rivers. I watched that hippo swallow an entire leopard. He ran the leopard down, outmaneuvered the leopard, caught the leopard, and ate it. Now, how in the hell does a 12 or 13, 14, 1500 pound hippo run a cheetah or a leopard down, outmaneuver them, catch them, and kill them and eat them? I would never, never bet on that. No way. By God, they do it. They actually kill more humans than any other animal in the jungle. Hippopotamus. They just have a bad temper. They have a big mouth. A lot of those big hippos, their bottom canine teeth are 13 inches long. Their top teeth are seven or eight inches long. So you have these big spikes coming at you. And when they run at something with their mouth open, everything gets eaten. <laughs> Um, you, you can't do anything against it. You can't just bite it. You can't fight it. Uh, and when they close their mouth, they spear you with those big uh, canine teeth. Incredible. I'd never seen uh, videos like I was watching that night on hippos. And they're so big, they just run into things. Elephants even sidestep them a little bit. All right, let's see. Well, that is definitely better. All right, I'm going to hurry a couple more times, Max. Hey, Brad, you know what the difference between a hippo and a zippo is? Uh, one's lighter than the other. But you're right, one's really heavy, the other's a little lighter. <laughs> yeah, one's really heavy and the other one's a little lighter. <laughs> you know, even the little hippos that were only maybe three or four months old, it was amazing how aggressive and how wide they could open their mouth. Everything sidestep, sidestep the hippos, even the uh, water buffalo. The water buffalo is the second biggest killer of people uh, in Africa and stuff. That little, that very, very juvenile hippo, he didn't sidestep anything. He went after stuff. He had an attitude. Probably grew, grew up in the inner city. He's probably gluten-free. Gluten-free and he's just upset. All right, so now we do this. All right. I can't see the cutting edge as good as it could before. Oh. Okay, well that is definitely much, much better. Oop, bent the paper that time. We do it one more time and quit. Not gonna keep you here all day. I'm actually, Actually, I'm going to get rid of this, and I'm going to put a little pressure on it this way with the open face straight line. Looks like this on your side, because I can see it's actually way more beveled on this side than it is that side. So there's something just a little bit strange about the V-notch, the way it works. So I'm going to drop it down and take more of the heel off of that blade so I can help maybe make cutting edge better. If your knife is kind of thick on the secondary bevel, it, it's never going to cut right because it's got to force itself through the paper. It's like trying to take a, a knife that isn't as thin as a chef knife with those little slots in it to break the suction on the potato. Just try to cut a good firm potato in two with a knife that's a tiny bit thick and doesn't have those suc uh, suction breakers on the sides of the knives. It's almost impossible to push that knife through the potato. Potato is just too tough. It, it won't fold apart so you can cut on down in. The knife can be crazy sharp, but you've got to get that knife through the through the potato. And that takes a lot of pressure. Oh, it's still gonna take that knife is incredibly thick. Out here at the tip it's that thick. That's, that's dull. Uh, I'm bound determined not to quit because I usually, I don't quit. <laughs> um, so let's press harder, work a little faster, 
cut that blade down. It takes an awful lot to cut a blade down three thousandths of an inch, even though it's taken off big pieces. If that cutting edge is three thousandths of an inch wide, you have to cut down at least three thousandths of an inch on each side of the knife to get it down to the cutting edge. And it's hot out here. Actually, it's starting to cool off because it clouded up and we're under the trees and we're out of the direct sunshine. Actually, stainless steel is kind of tough, kind of hard. Sure sharpened a lot of knives this weekend down in Oklahoma City. It's fun to listen to some of them real Okies. <laughs> Especially the kids. The way they talk. That drawl that they have. Alright. And no, I, know, I don't ever say it's sharp when it's not. I'll work for an hour if I have to, but I'll never say, Oh yeah, that's sharp! But it ain't sharp. Okay, that oh, changed tremendously. Tremendous. <laughs> okay, that was that was a big change. I got to do it one more time. I just have to. All right, I'm gonna bear down. I'm gonna uh, what we call lean on it and really cut some metal here. Lean on it. Lean on it. Got to be careful how I lean on it. I'll break the blade off. I'm actually picking it up, moving towards the point, set it down and drag it back towards me so I can rip some metal off. And then I'm gonna show you the blade. Remember I talk about railroad tracks on it and things like that. And I'm amazed how there's hardly nothing on this blade for railroad tracks, the way I've been treating it and cutting it. You ought to see some pretty bad stuff there. All right, now we just Lighten up on it, turn it this way, turn it that way, this way, that way. Oh, oh. okay, quit. <laughs> Just like that. Alright, I look for the cutting edge. It takes a lot to take off enough to actually make a huge difference. That, that definitely bites. Isn't that funny? It doesn't take the fingernail off like it should, but man, does it bite your skin. It takes quite a bit to mill three or four thousandths of an inch off. All right, let's try it one more time. I can still see a little bit of shine. It, it's all kinds of better but it's not as great as I would like to see it. It's funny how much it bites your skin. Take some of the fingernail off. I gotta quit at some point. <laughs> You're having yourself a dollar and eight cents worth of fun. Yeah. You must have a uh, eight percent sales tax here. We get lucky, it's actually 8.1, but they can't find the uh, small enough knife to cut that piece of, off the pan. <laughs> okay. Well, as much metal as I've taken off there, you would think that it was milled down to a cutting edge pretty darn good. I can still see shine right in here, which means I haven't gotten, I've, I've gotten to that point, but not gotten down to the point where it's really sharp. 
That's pretty sharp. And that's actually as sharp as a lot of people's pocket knives. It's definitely different. I'm going to quit there. Not going to keep you all day. And uh, but you can see how it grabs my skin. It wouldn't jerk and, and stop and jump like that if it wasn't grabbing the skin. This is Brad Buckner, SharpnessVest.com. You take care. We'll catch you later. Later? Later. <laughs> hey, do you know how to tell the difference between an uh, alligator and a crocodile? One has aider in it. <laughs> <laughs> one, one, one you'll see later and one after a while. <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. Later. Later.